friends welcome to the channel physics by iitians today we are back with another interview question and this question was asked in iit madras phd interview the question is when two operators commute what is the significance of that and this question is so beautiful that we can understand we can learn lot more physics here we should know about the symmetry and conservation laws we should understand the symmetry mathematically we should understand the symmetry classical mechanically and we should understand finally the quantum mechanically and then we will try to find out the question answer of this question that when two operators commute what is the significance of that and this i tell you this is a much more philosophy with physics here so i request you to understand this video very carefully so let's start first we should know about symmetry and conservation laws and symmetry in physical laws we should know what is symmetry and how can a physical law be symmetrical now symmetry is usually used to refer an object that is invariant under some transformation that includes translation reflection rotation or scaling so after certain operations this the object will remain the same then the operation is called the symmetry symmetry operation now how symmetry and conservation laws are related to each other for each of the rules of symmetry there is a corresponding conservation law okay suppose there is special translation symmetry then we get conservation laws of momentum if there is time translation symmetry we get energy conservation law if rotational translation symmetry we get angular momentum conservation law quantum mechanical phase symmetry we get charge conservation laws we first understand what is symmetry mathematically suppose we are taking a function f of x and f of x is x the and f of minus x is minus f of x then function is odd function now if function f of x is x square then whether f of x is x uh, x is plus x or x is minus x f of x will be x square so it is an even function and is symmetry about y axis so let's try to understand it graphically we are plotting y equals to x and y equals to minus x here look here there is no reflect there is no reflectional symmetry no symmetry along the reflection with the y axis but uh, when you are taking this curve that is y equals to x square the whether you are seeing from this side or you are reflecting after reflection the figure will remain same here after reflection this will become this and if you reflect this it will become this they are different you can finally distinguish them but here whether it is reflected or it will be original uh, as it was the there will be symmetry so there will be no change or you cannot distinguish between the after the operation of rotation so it is rotationally symmetric now we should understand some more symmetry operations with the understanding of figure suppose this figure tells you the inversion symmetry what is inversion symmetry this green dot shows you the center of inversion so after inversion the point 2 will become point 4 the point 3 will become point 5 so after symmetry this 3 5 this 3 uh, when there was 3 now there is 5 and this 5 becomes 3 or this 2 becomes 4 and this 4 becomes 2 you understand this is rotational symmetry here so this is the axis of rotation the picture will remain same under this rotational symmetry or rotational operation this is a translational operation whether this object is here or you are here you will look same environment this is the translational symmetry so how these two are connected mathematically there is a beautiful theorem in mathematics that is noether's theorem and it states that every differentiable symmetry of the action of a physical system has a corresponding conservation law and the theorem was proven mathemat by mathematician m a noether in 1915 and published in 1918 after a special case was proven by e coserford and f co in 1909 so we should understand the noether's theorem carefully the symmetry properties of a physical system are intimately related to the conservation laws characterizing the system noether's theorem gives a precise description of this relation the theorem states that each continuous symmetry of a physical system implies some physical property of the system is conserved how do you understand it suppose we are taking time translation means whether the time is t 
or the translated time that is t plus a where a is also constant. If the laws are physical pictures will be invariant with this time translation if there is a symmetry in the time translation. How do you understand? Suppose we are taking an example in classical mechanics. So a particle solely acted upon by the gravity will have a gra gravitational potential energy mgh if it is suspended from a height h above the earth's surface. Okay, So a particle which is above the earth's surface at a height h and whether you are measuring the potential energy or you are finding out the potential energy at time t naught or at time t naught plus 3 the potential energy will remain same the total gravitational potential energy of the particle will be same at all the time or the gravitational potential energy is preserved or conservation of gravitational potential energy where this particle is solely acted upon by the gravity so this is a time symmetry time translation whether you are seeing it whether you are observing it at time t or whether you are observing it at time t plus a that total gravitational this gravitational energy is same that is mgh how do you understand the spatial transition suppose you are doing a spatial transformation from r to a point r plus a and if it is spatially symmetric means how do you understand the temperature in a room that may be independent of where the thermometer is located in the room whether it is at a corner of a room whether it is at the in the middle of a room the temperature will remain same so it is spatially symmetric but the translation will not affect the physical properties of the system now the spatial rotation this is also uh, example this uh, fully rotational symmetric that is in a sphere spherical um, spherical object it has proper rotational symmetry okay so now you understand symmetry and laws of conservation in classical mechanics classical mechanics we should know about cyclic coordinates now what are the cyclic coordinates the cyclic coordinates are the physical parameter that do not depend on any uh, remain a uh, concept that do not depend or moreover one can conclude that this physical parameter will remain conserved when the motion is being taken in that coordinate okay how do you understand suppose we are taking the Lagrangian equation motion that is dt of del L del q j dot minus del L by del q j equals to 0 now cyclic coordinate means del L by del q j is 0 that is that particular coordinate system is not included in the Lagrangian or Lagrangian is independent of that particular coordinate which will be cyclic or igno ignorable coordinate so this equation of motion will become dt of del L by del q j dot equals to 0 now for cyclic mo coordinates this conjugate momenta are conserved what are the quantum mechanic what is the quantum mechanical picture so when two operators commute and what is the significance of that we will understand it suppose we are taking Op an operation that is p and it is operating on a state 1 and it is giving you a state 2 this suppose this operation is a reflection operation so upon reflection the state 1 becomes state 2 so upon reflection on state 2 it will become state 1 so p is here some operator or something operator in the sense that it does something to a state to make a make a new state okay now we understand here suppose we are doing here the reflection operation the state 1 and state 2 are reflected in the plane p p prime this one is the our plane and this is the earlier state or initial state and after reflection the state become like this way so this is the p is the quantum mechanical operator here and that is the reflection operator which are we consider a general situation suppose with the state psi 1 is the initial state and after some time or under under given physical conditions it has become the state psi 2 so psi 2 we can write it as u cap psi 1 where psi 1 has become psi 2 with a, a new state with the operation of u cap now imagine we perform the operation q cap on the whole system so we are performing an operation that is q cap with the whole system that is q cap psi 2 equals to q cap u cap psi 1 this q cap psi 2 will lead a new state psi 2 to psi 2 prime and this q cap u cap q cap operation will lead a new state to the psi 1 as psi 1 prime so psi 1 become psi 1 prime 
after the operation of q and psi 2 become psi 2 prime after the operation of q. Now, if the physics is symmetrical under this operation, this, this is the key word that is symmetrical because it is not a general property of the system. So, if these laws of physics are symmetrical under this operation, then waiting for the same time under the same conditions, we should have psi 2 prime equals to u cap psi 1 prime. Earlier it was psi 2 equals to u cap psi 1. Now it become after the symmetrical, symmetrical uh, considering the symmetrical consideration on the operation of, of the operation of q cap we get psi 2 prime equals to u cap psi 1 prime. Okay. So, this psi 2 prime you can also write it as q cap psi 2 because q cap operation has lead this state psi 2 to psi prime or change this state psi 2 to psi 2 prime and psi 1 prime can be written as q cap psi 1 because q cap operation has change the state psi 1 to psi 1 prime. So, we finally get q cap psi 2 equals to u cap q cap psi 1. Now, we try to write this psi 2 term in terms of psi 1. So, what is q cap psi 2? Look here q cap psi 2 or psi 2 can be written as u cap psi 1. So, here q cap u cap psi 1 equals to u cap q cap psi 1. This is our final result. So, u cap q cap equals to q cap u cap or that is what we wanted to get and it is the mathematical statement of the symmetry. So, we say that this operation u and q are commuting with each other because q u equals to u q. So, we can define the symmetry in the following way that a physical system is symmetric with respect to the operation q when q commutes with u the operation of the passage of time. Okay. So, when these two operators commute with each other, they are giving you the mathematical statement of symmetry. Now, we understand the co a question, when two operators commute, what is the significance of that? And we should question some more to ourselves that what do you mean by symmetry and conservation law? What is the relationship between a symmetry and a conserved quantity? Continuous symmetry and constant of motions, gauge symmetries and conserved additive quantum numbers, discrete symmetries and charge conju conjugation, parity, time reversal. So, friends, if you understand this video, don't forget to like this, don't forget to share with your friends. If you find our efforts helpful, you can help us by clicking the link given in the description box. Thank you.